what would you like to talk about today, Tig? Um, I guess we could probably talk about that weird pod people movie I just watched. I'm not familiar with pod people. We can have that discussion if you like. Oh, shit. So Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the original, not the 1970s remake, which a lot of people are very, very fond of. I, I did notice that the, the actor in the original one... Oh, uh, yeah, Kevin McCarthy? Yeah, Kevin McCarthy's in the, in the 70s one. He's the one that, I guess, comes running down the street in New York or whatever, screaming that they're coming. You're next, please! Please! You're an expert in danger! Please! For, for, for people who aren't aware, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a sort of paranoid 1950s science fiction thriller about a guy who comes to suspect and then find that people all throughout his town are being replaced by pod people, pods from outer space that replace human beings with kind of exact replica, unemotional versions of, of themselves. So that's basically the whole movie. It's just a short, quick, to the point kind of science fiction role. I, I liked that it, it was very simple, but it also was clever. Jewel isn't what upsets him, it's my daughter-in-law. He's got the crazy idea she isn't his mother. She isn't, she isn't. Don't let her give me. There's at least, a lot, I feel like, a little something here other than just be scared of the monsters or be scared of the alien. Obviously, there's a whole, the whole Cold War element there's that idea of, can you trust your neighbor? Can you not trust your neighbor? Are the, are the people that you're interacting with really being honest with you about who they are? When he's talking to somebody, you, you're never sure if the person he's talking to is, is, a, is a pod person or a real person ever. At it again, eh? My nurse tells me you were in last week and wanted very much to see me. It wasn't anything important. Being confused and being on your toes the whole time was fun. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did good with that. With not ever, with, with not ever really revealing to you whether or not the people he's interacting with are one of them until it comes time for you know for them to go after him. Me watching it now, it doesn't appear to be clever because I'm again we've had you know the movie's so old and it's been done so many times. But in the fifties, it must have been kind of fun because it was a new idea and and being kept on your toes while you're watching this. I just I had this image of my head in my head of people in the theater, like, like screaming or being like, oh, he is a pod person. <laughs> I could imagine that going on while people were watching this when it first came out, like how exciting it must have been and scary. I'm assuming this was a more popular one, right? Critics basically ignored it at the, at the time. It was just, it was just yet another, you know. Right, and I understand Donner that. movie that, that, the... that came and went. Um, it's, it was really only in later years that it became the cult classic and now genuine classic that it's 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 considered okay I mean, these days it's these days it's considered a genuine classic of the sci-fi genre um obviously classic enough so that you know it was remade and so on but uh but at the time it wasn't it wasn't particularly big it wasn't a a big huge big huge movie well i know one guy who was a fan of this movie because he basically made a movie that was based exactly around this idea and that's the British guy who made World's End, The World's End. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's funny after um after watching it the, the the other night, I was like, you know what? The World's End is basically this movie, but fast paced and funny with action. Yeah, I thought that the whole thing held together well. I only had one issue, and I I'm hoping you can answer it for me because I went online to try to figure it out. I bet you it's the same thing that 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 I don't have an answer for and that to me is a, is a hole for me so let's oh. see let's see what it is because I, I wonder if it's going to be the same thing does it have to do with the female lead yes it does for people who are watching is a pod comes down and it takes the form of you i guess if it's near you or whatever they give you like a pod for your person and then once you fall asleep something happens to you and the pod person replaces you. Yeah, it's like your mind goes into the pod person. They never really clarify what happens to your actual body, your original body. Towards the end of the movie, when the the two main characters are are fleeing and they go into a cave, the female characters having trouble staying awake. They're afraid that if they fall asleep, they're going to turn into pod people. So the one main character leaves and he sees a farm, a pod farm, like that's kind of close. And when he comes back, he finds his girlfriend fell asleep and then he realizes that she's a pod person. Yeah. But how did she become a pod person if there was no pod for her to change or... It doesn't hold together or make any sense to me whatsoever. The way it plays in the movie is like so a switch was flipped in her mind and beca she became a pod person in her mind within the same body that she was already inhabiting. He's in here! He's in here! Get him! Get him! 
that's not how it works. At no, least for the whole movie. Yeah, the whole movie they're selling to you. Like the, there's the there's the best friends pod on the pool table scene where he's just sitting there yeah. and it's him. Yeah, the, the whole movie they're selling to you that something happens to your body and these pod creatures replace you. But then with her, like you said, it's almost like just a switch. She fell asleep, a switch went off, and now she's a pod person. Yeah, I I, I I absolutely I absolutely agree, and I have absolutely no explanation for it. And to me, it's it's a giant it's a giant plot hole. The whole mechanism for how it happens is is kind of somewhat vague. When the, the pair of them are on the run and they get caught in his office, which incidentally, what a stupid idea! Like to go to your own office. They went back to the office. <laughs> Come on, like, that, that's a dumb idea. So they're back at the office, and and then like the the, the cop and this the psychiatrist gives babes basically the info dump. Like here's Here's what's actually happening. Desire, ambition, faith. Without them, life's so simple, believe me. I don't want any part of it. You're forgetting something, Miles. What's that? You have no choice. And then they bring in a couple of pods to, to become them. The impression you get there, as well as the impression you get in previous scenes, like with pods being left in the basement of people's houses and all that, is that like it's a proximity thing, right? When the pod is near you, the pod's going to take... Yeah, they even shit. put the pods in the back of their car. They tried to sneak pods in the back of the car when they were leaving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pods in the back of the car or in the greenhouse. So one, what the hell happened with her, like we were just talking about? And then two, why couldn't like the pair of them get far away from the original pod? If they drove miles and miles away, wouldn't that be enough? I'd... Yeah, they could have just left town. But it still doesn't explain what the hell happened with her. I did enjoy the the tension of the uh, having cell phones, obviously, and not... And every town in America not being as connected as yeah. it is now. And the, the terror of when, when he realizes the cops are pod people, you know, he realizes that there's certain people of authority in the town that are, that have become aliens. Back then it's like, oh my God, like he really literally has no one to t turn to. He's trying to call the FBI. Yeah. I think that's something that, um, you know, I don't know how well that would play for modern audiences. You make a, a really great point about that. How do you relate to that? We're just here in this sort of island and the rest of the world is, you know, is is out there kind of thing. But that's not, at least certainly in the Western world, that's not a thing for 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 people now. So yeah, you have to figure out at the time that that bit of paranoia had to be pretty big. This idea, right? Your your town, like little small town Americana, was the ultimate safe harbor. At least that's how it was always portrayed, right? It's the ultimate safe harbor. And then to know that anybody you're speaking to could be one of them. Yeah, and you and you can't let anybody know. Like, there's no way to contact anybody outside of your town because there's no technology really to be able to do it. Yeah, th th there's also that scene that, again, is another one that I'm not sure how it would play for modern audiences who sort of even aren't familiar with the fact that this was a thing. Where, where right, where he's uh, where he's trying to call the FBI and he has to deal with the operator, yeah. and the operator is giving him the runaround, and he really, you know, he realizes w what's going on. He realizes that she's just trying to make sure that, okay, stay where you are so that she can send people after him. He, when he first calls the FBI, you think, oh, crap, they got to D.C. and they're doing it there. But then I realized, oh, no, that's the local operator in town who is not letting him make the connection to the FBI. The Sacramento circuits are busy, doctor. I'll call you back. All right. All right, I'll wait for your call. What a terrific bit of building up suspense and terror. And though, again, I do have to wonder how that would play for a modern audience. When you wanted to call outside of your local area, they were connecting you to, you know, to other switchboards and, and, and other operators. I think that whole scene, that whole sequence of uh, sequence there was really great. Once you realize as an audience member what's going on, it's like, oh, shit, like the jig is up. And he really doesn't have anybody that he can go to because... You know, even the operator is in on it at this point. That was one of my favorite scenes. And he's there with his friends and they're trying to figure out who should leave and who should, because at first they're like, we should all go. Then they said the two girls should go. That seems so realistic too. Like everyone's like, well, what should we do? They made the, the grave mistake of don't let anyone go off camera because once someone is like off camera and you can't see them anymore, that's when the switch happens. Yeah. <laughs> and the director of this movie is the same guy who directed Dirty Harry years later. Oh, really? It's a dirt and Escape from Alcatraz as well, another uh, well known oh, one. Oh, jeez. It feels like a lifetime, those two movies being that close to 15 years. It seems like 30. Imagine setting this next to Dirty Harry. They would feel like they're <laughs> no, <it's... laughs> com two completely different worlds. Yeah, it's very weird. I, I also like that it doesn't have a happy ending. 
which I kind of expected it to have because of, of when it was made, I felt like they were going to have to sugarcoat the ending, but it, it doesn't. Yeah, the authorities believe him at the end, but by that time, as we've already seen, the pods are being spread all over the place. Yeah. I, and I, I like that choice. And I just think throughout the, the, the picture, it just does a, a really good job of building up tension. They slowly escalate the dread as it moves on. There's that great scene in the town square. The trucks are pulling in uh, yeah. and everyone's gathered around, help spread the pods ar around to neighboring communities. I think that was really cool. And the opening was really cool too. I like that they kind of just punch you in the face. You just walk right into him like screaming like a maniac. And then he's telling you what happened. I just, it was a nice, nice quick opening. But will you tell these fools I'm not crazy? Make them listen to me before it's too late! There's quite a few things I can I can kind of knock about it, even though I love the love love the picture. But one thing I think it really does right is wastes no time. It just gets immediately right into it. Immediately once you start to go into the flashbacks of him in town, they start laying the hints like in ba basically the very first scene where they start talking about the weird things that are happening in town. How's Mickey and the baby? Well, they're fine, but it seems that everybody else in San Pierre needs a doctor. No? We've got an office full of patients. Oh, no. And my first day back? The movie doesn't waste any time. I think it's only like an hour and 20 minutes. It just blasts through. I noticed that the remake is just under two hours. Like, you know, you added another like 30, 40 minutes of, of what? Fluff. Of, of, but yeah, I like that this just gets in, tells its story. And it gets out. It was like a quick, fun movie to watch. I will point out a couple of things, a couple of things that always sort of make me chuckle. One is the fact that wh whoever the female lead is, she comes back to town and she goes to visit him in the doctor's office and all that. She's like dressed in this, this gown or something that like... As soon as she walked in, I said to my wife, is she going to the prom? Like, what is going on? There's, <laughs> yeah. there's, like, there's like flowers or bouquet or whatever, like in the top of her dress too, which is just really weird. Two... Did it take a while to click as far as what their relationship is, right? Because they keep t they kept talking about her being married. He, I guess, was married, but he isn't anymore. They were they're both divorced. That's as best I could tell, which would be kind of edgy for the late fifties. Yeah, I think he I think he makes a quick comment about like them, I guess, getting divorced because he always was working. He was always away. She got back a few days ago, and she wanted to see you. Are you still interested? My interest in married women is strictly professional, or yours would have been a lost cause long ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that, that, that whole thing was just so kind of a little vague to me. How unintentionally hilarious the score can be. It's got this, this big energetic score, and there's these, there's these scenes late in the movie when they're running. Right. It's, they're running through the hills and, you know, they're running out of town and all that. And this score is like, you know, but meanwhile, it's just this like slow static shot of them, like running for 30 seconds, just real kind of normally. It just kind of struck me as a, a hilarious relic of the of, of the era. When the friend first finds the pod guy on his pool table, that too made me laugh just because it was like, the like key doesn't call the cops or and he calls his friend. And then they yeah. come over <laughs> and they're like, well, uh, we're going to go home. Keep an eye on it tonight. If anything happens, give me a call. <laughs> yes. Don't call the cops. And I'm like, what? Nobody's, what is this? Like, this is so yeah. absurd. It's fantastic, but there must be some reason why this thing is in your house. Would you be willing to sit up with your strange friend and see what his next move is? If nothing happens by morning, Call the police. If something happens, call me, will you? Yeah, we're pretty sure it's going to take you over, but just, you know, let me know if something happens. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I don't think these things detract from the movie. I think, I think, still think it's a great story and fun, exciting movie. It just has some of those quirky charms of its era. Yeah, it was fun though. I enjoyed it a lot. This to me feels very much like a movie length Twilight Zone episode. They don't mind being a little dark. They don't mind being a little provocative. That's the kind of stuff that the Twilight Zone was doing, which is one of the reasons why at the last minute I subbed this one in for what I was originally going to do, <laughs> because it kind of felt tonally like it, it worked with what we had just watched. But this this was made before they started making the Twilight Zone show, right? This was just a couple of years before the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone series started in 1959. Okay, so that's that's interesting then, because that it wasn't like um it wasn't like Twilight Zone was out and then they made this movie. Keep your eyes a little wide and blank. Show no interest or excitement. I would have never watched the original. If someone pointed me and said, oh, you should watch Invasion Body Snatchers, I would have ended up watching the 1970 whatever version. Not that I'm saying it's, I, I haven't seen it, so I can't judge it, but I'm glad I got to see the original one. And I'll just, I'll end it with this, my take this any way you want. My wife enjoyed this much, much better than Casablanca. <laughs> I definitely recommend people who want to see 
like vintage classic science fiction movies, especially of the of the, of the sort that are my favorite favorite. I like the I, I like science fiction that kind of um, has heavy thematic elements for you to chew on and stuff. This is definitely one I feel like to check out. It's my time. Let me reach up here. I have on this little post-it right here. I have three movies on here. So this week, you're gonna watch a Nicolas Cage movie. Uh-oh, Nick, I, I I don't know if I like the sounds of this. <laughs> Raising Arizona. Call me hi. Turn to the right! You're a flower, you are. I do. You bet I do. Okay, then. <laughs> Give me that baby, you warthog from hell! Ah! Yeah, I'm down with that. All right, sounds sounds good. Excellent. Why not like, subscribe, but, and most importantly, leave a comment down below. People who have seen uh, both versions, we want to hear some opinions about the remake compared to the original as well, because um, I haven't seen the remake in years. Uh, Tig, I don't believe you've he's, he's seen it at all. So let us know if uh, at some point we should get to the remake. If we should be watching it. Yeah. And check out our Patreon at Nerd Out With Me. Thanks for hanging out with us at the Movie Club.